Hi, I'm Keith Cotter and welcome to the HSB Academy tutorial session. In this session we're going to talk about vents and we're going to learn how you place a vent in a stick frame wall. A vent could be used for anything from the likes of an MEP object such as a duct or pipe, uh, a HEVAC um, MEP object. And if I was protruding through the wall, you obviously need to create a cutout in that wall because there will be a penetration through the either the beams or the sheets in your wall. Another reason might be that in a room you need to have ventilation and thus you may need to put a penetration through the wall and place a vent in here. So let's jump in and see how you place this particular vent. So in this example here, I have a stick frame wall with a vent shown here. Just for pure clarity purposes, I'm going to switch this back to wireframe so that we can see what we're doing. To access the vent tool, you go to the stick frame ribbon and you pick the vent tool. Now there's a number of properties here that you can use in order to place the vent. And I'm going to start by showing you the first method of placing a vent. And the first method assumes we already have a protrusion through the wall of some type of MEP object. So this is the first method I'm showing you at the moment. And what I'm going to do is go through these options in order to work with that particular method. So the first of these is the auto dimension value. And that basically assumes when I set it through, it's going to use the diameter of this duct as the setting out uh, fixing for the, the width and height of my actual vent. I'm also going to allow a tolerance of 10 millimeters around that particular duct as well. I'm going to come back to the rest of these settings later, but I'm moving on into the inventory. If you remember in my framing style session earlier, I would have also shown you that you can set up inventories in your framing style. So I'm now going to set these as the preferred beam types that I want to use. And the last thing, again, I will come back to these in the later stage. Last thing I want to do is ensure that I'm using a rectangular shape. In this case, we could also use a round shape if you so wish. I'm going to say okay to that. And like all of these tools, you should look to the bottom left corner and it will always prompt you what you need to do. So it's asking me to select the item container, which is this one. And now it's asking me to select the actual duct. So I'm going to select the duct. And finally, you'll see that is essentially, if I now hit escape on the keyboard to cancel it, you'll now see that I have a marker to indicate that particular vent is now in position. So at this stage, I can now generate and select this particular item container. And you will now see that it will place the vent information around the actual pipe ducting. So at this stage, I'm just going to turn this into a front view and zoom in here to take a look at what it has actually done. So you can see it has now put the framing completely around this duct. So if we select the actual marker in, in this particular tool, like all of these tools, all the properties that we've just filled out are here on the left hand side on the properties. And the first thing that I wanted to do is I'm going to maybe increase the, di uh, the, the tolerance around the actual vent itself. Now, if I want to generate this, I could either one, uh, come back here again to uh, get the item container view, or I could leave it in a, a front view like this. And by selecting the actual tool itself, I can go immediately to generate and you'll now see that it will update the framed result around this particular solution here. Now we're gonna start looking at some of the other properties that I didn't pick earlier on. So I'm gonna pick this tool, and one that we didn't see earlier was snap to existing studs, for example. If I turn that on, you're now going to see a completely different result this time. So if I pick this now and generate it, you'll now see that the result is it will automatically snap to existing studs. In other words, it doesn't add any new studs into the solution. It automatically frames to the existing studs in the solution. So you can continue to create additional 
um, changes to this vent and get a different result as you so wish. So I explained at the beginning that there was two methods. I showed you the first method and that was assuming that you already had a duct coming through the wall. But what about if you wanted an in-room vent? In other words, you wanted a vent here, but you don't actually have any protrusion through it. Well, that same method is used here if I go to vent. And this time I'm now using these values. And that's why I didn't go near these values a while ago, because this will allow you to place the vent without any MEP or ducting type object protruding through the wall. So I'm going to use these default values for now, but you can change them. And again, I'm going to change the type of inventory object I'm using. And I'm also going to say that I may be wanting to snap if I wanted to, to existing false or true. This is the value I changed earlier. I'm going to leave it as false for now. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to zoom out here and select the item container. And you can now see it says select the conduit doctor pipe or hit escape to continue with point selection. So this is the difference in the second method. Instead of selecting the actual pipe, I hit escape, and I can now position where I want to have this vent. So I'm now going to say it's positioned here. Again, we get the similar marker that we got earlier on, but now there's obviously no piping there. And at this stage, I'm going to generate this solution and frame it just like we had earlier on and we get exactly the same result but obviously with no piping through it with all of these tools you can also modify them so with this tool we're going to move it so we pick this then move it and go move it from here to here and even though the framing has remained, what we now do is we simply select the tool and then generate once more. And it will then give us the new frame position of where this tool is sitting. I'm Keith Cotter. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in future sessions.